Hello and welcome to the Sober Bartender Podcast, the show where we recover from life. I'm your host, Brandy Kelly. So I'm here to tell you that you are not an asshole. You're just overwhelmed. Do you ever feel like you're being a terrible human? You're being a terrible friend. You're not returning calls. You're being short with the kids or with your spouse. Um, the slightest thing goes wrong and you just erupt and you feel like the biggest asshole. I know what that feels like. And I feel like that's what's been happening with me lately. And so I had to do some digging and I came to the conclusion, I'm not an asshole. I am just overwhelmed. And overwhelm can come from so many different places, from work, relationships, kids, schedules, money, um, the news, health, your health, your loved one's health, and just trying to do too much. And I recognize that I have, in fact, been trying to do too much at the same time. I am trying to learn multiple different things online, and tech is not my strong point. It is a huge learning curve for me. And then trying to learn multiple things at the same time doesn't put me in a good place. And, um, you know, recently something came up with with work, like an unexpected schedule change where I thought it was going to be one thing. I thought that I had clarity that it would be what was agreed upon. And then it was something else. And it wasn't just, oh, okay, that's unfortunate or that's disappointing. I had a meltdown. Like I couldn't find my joy. I couldn't come to a peaceful place. I couldn't, I couldn't just meet it as it was, and then work through my emotions, I shut down. I was angry. Um, And I started to, you know, after a couple days, I just, you know, I let that simmer and then, you know, settle. And then I was able to see that, you know, it was a, a fair enough arrangement and that I had a choice that I could stay or I could, you know, choose to work elsewhere. And, you know, I do like, I do like where I'm at and I feel like it is the better of my options for now. So, you know, I made a choice once I was calm. Um, but then I started to, to examine that and there was so much fear in that. There was so much fear that was like behind my anger because I was so angry and I like sent like a big old novel angry text and I was just I felt wronged and I felt hurt and behind those things I was afraid um I was afraid that I wasn't valued and that you know my concerns didn't matter and were being disregarded so I felt unworthy and those are old feelings that I thought that I had worked past but you know we as we unbecome who we used to be when we, you know, who we needed to be to survive, things are going to come up repeatedly and we're going to have different opportunities to show up for them in different ways. And so this was kind of a a leveling of my, of my ego and a reminder that I'm still, I'm still human. I'm still, you know, learning and growing and, um, yeah, I just, uh, I use it, I guess, as fuel to continue in the direction that I do want to go. But I started to notice that, like, I just have this short, this short, short fuse. And I'm not an angry person. So where is this anger coming from? And then I recognized that it was coming from the fear. But where else is this fear? Like, what, what is it doing you know, what is it trying to teach me? Like, what is its purpose here? What is it trying to protect me from? Um, There's a lot of financial insecurity. So there's a lot of fear 
that I won't have everything that I need or that if I let off the gas that everything will fall. And so in just looking at all the different little pieces of my life, I recognize that I have taken so much of the world and put it on my own shoulders. And the world still spins without me trying to carry it. And I forget that. And it takes a whole lot of fear and pain to bring me to my knees to where I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Let me take some of this off. Let me set some of this down. So I've since I've gone over some of the causes, this is overwhelm, by the way, just in a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's trying to control too many things at the same time and not really taking the time to look at at my part in in what I'm in what I'm doing and what I'm creating for myself because I am creating all these things I'm choosing all of these things I'm focusing on all these things I'm hyper fixated on all these things on work and on my relationships and on schedules and on money and on you know health and just trying to do too much just leaves me feeling empty and overwhelmed and stressed and beaten down and afraid and angry. And so I wanted to do an episode just to share some of the coping mechanisms that have been working for me and that I'm utilizing because I feel like I'm not alone in this. I know we all get overwhelmed, but we just look at it as a part of life. But if we take the time to sit down and look at, well, what can I do with this? How can I lessen this? How, because then we have, we open ourselves up, you know, to set it down and then we leave room for the light to come in and for the joy to come back in. And that's always what I'm seeking is to get to a place where I can experience joy because at my core, I am a joyous being. Like laughter and silliness and not taking myself so seriously like that that is where I thrive that is that is my baseline so let's talk about how to deal with overwhelm and you know just go over some of my coping mechanisms it's I already kind of went over the first one is to figure out why like what are you trying to control that feels out of control like I'm trying to control what other people need in schedules. I'm trying to control finances when, you know, I I make what I make and what I choose to do with the money is going to control how much is left over. Um, you know, I'm in control of where I work and, you know, I have the opportunity to look at other options. So, you know, your circumstances may be different, but just take one of those like I've I've described in the past as you know the the glass ball the things that you can't drop examine your your balls examine your priorities look at what it is that you're trying to control that you just feel like you want to pull your hair out over and uh you know just put those into the lens and give them a look and maybe set them down for a minute don't drop them, you know, don't say F it and just, you know, throw the pieces on the floor, but just set it down for a minute and give yourself some room to breathe. And then the next thing is to accept and acknowledge that that's how you're feeling. Stop fighting it. Stop trying to be, you know, joyous and and happy and put on that happy face to people I mean, I'm not saying, you know, go cry to your boss, but I'm saying like, look at yourself, sit with yourself and say, I'm overwhelmed. I'm doing too much. Like I'm afraid or I'm angry or I'm sad or accept how you're feeling and just sit with that. And then the next thing is to practice mindfulness, like set aside time for a guided meditation Um, I do use the Headspace app, but that is a paid app. If you go onto YouTube, you can just search for, you know, guided meditation. Some of my favorites are Dr. Joe Dispenza, as well as Wayne Dyer, but there are 
countless and you can't pick a wrong one. Like whatever you are guided to sit down and, and do that one. And you don't need to go into like a trans state. You're not going to do it wrong. Just sit, breathe and listen to what they're telling you. You know, your mind can wander, you can focus on things, but hopefully you find a meditation that just brings you back to your breath and, you know, practice some controlled breathing. And that, um, that just gets you to kind of a baseline to where you're not, you're not fixated on all the things. Um, and then focus on what you can control. Like, what are some things that are in your control? And you can focus on on that. You know, like I said, like with finances, I can control how much I spend. Even if how much I make is slightly out of my control, my spending, you know, whether I choose to go out to dinner or make a home-cooked meal, whether I decide to splurge and get steaks or just stick with, you know, my basic proteins. Like, you know, there are, there is some agency in there. And that can be a relief, you know, that that small control that we have, um, we can do good with that. We can do good for ourselves with that. Um, but do less. You know, we, we talk about just like hustle and grind, but when overwhelm sets in, you're not going to be productive. So recognizing that that's where you're at and just taking a step back and being willing to just do less. Instead of doing the five things that you set out to do on your day off, maybe just do two of them and give yourself permission to rest. And not like a 15 minute rest, like a rest rest. Um, set time and workload boundaries. So sure, you can get things done, but give yourself a block of time to that you're going to dedicate to those tasks and then don't go over because you're going to be cutting into your own time. You're going to put more weight on yourself. Um, focus on one thing at a time. That's hard for me. That's very hard to like sit still and just do one task. I find myself getting up to switch over laundry. I go into the bathroom and then I see that the mirror needs to be cleaned. Like I don't, I don't have ADD as far as I know, but I definitely have trouble focusing. And so it almost, I almost have to fight against myself to just stay in what I'm doing. So I encourage you to try that because it's, it's a rewarding experience to just focus um challenge your perfectionism that's a big thing like i i get uh i get caught up in the idea that all of the laundry needs to be done all at once and you know like the whole house needs to be cleaned at once and i usually instead of cleaning every day i I mean, you know, you clean up the kitchen counters, but I just do a big clean one day a week. But there's something in me that doesn't feel like I deserve rest until those things are done. And I have to challenge that idea and allow myself to get what I need because I need rest more than I need clean floors. And my family needs me to be rested more than they need the floors to be clean. And if they need the floors clean that much, they are welcome to clean the floors. And I will say I am blessed to have a husband that will just randomly pick a project and clean it. Um, the responsibility doesn't lie on me, but I still, I still think that it's my responsibility, despite having a partner that continually tells me that it's no one's job that we both live here um so challenge your beliefs and challenge your idea that you need to do it and you need to do it perfect done is better than perfect so sometimes I will just sweep and not mop you know sometimes I will just beat the couch cushions instead of throwing the covers into the wash and I'm learning to just be okay with good enough some days. 
Um, oh, outsource and delegate. So that kind of what I just mentioned, um, you know, if, if you're in the financial position to have a house cleaner, you don't necessarily have to have somebody come every two weeks or every month, but when you just need help, it's okay to treat yourself to have somebody come and clean your house. You may be dealing with something that has nothing to do with housework. I'm just giving my own life examples, you know, as you know, that's, that's what I can relate to. That's where I'm at. Um, as I feel like so much more should be done than is getting done. Um, so if you feel like there are other areas of your life, look at where you can outsource and delegate. I know with podcasting, there are a lot of people that don't have time to do, you know, the editing or the marketing or, you know, the social media management, and they're able to outsource those things. There is someone that is really good at doing everything. And so if you need something done that is not your strong suit and you don't have the time or the energy or the mental, emotional capacity to learn that thing right now, it's totally okay. Give yourself permission to find someone else who does. And that's my next point is ask for help. What do you need help with? Where could you use help, but you don't feel like you can ask for help? Rec look at those things, recognize what they are, and then ask anyway. Because the worst that some the worst thing that you can hear back is no, and then you're right back where you started. You might be a little bit irritated that you got a no, but the other side of that is that they could say yes, and then that's just one of those little balls in somebody else's hands. It's okay to ask for help. Um, another thing is take breaks. So I've been doing like online courses and I'm learning things that my brain doesn't know how to do. And then I'm like, oh, like I need to, I need to comprehend this. And so uh, something that I do as often as I need to is I just hit pause and I take a break. I go, you know, stand in the backyard for five minutes and let the sun hit my face. I put my feet in the sand. Our backyard has a lot of sand. I put my feet in the sand and I just, I picture all my negative energy going down into the sand and down below grounding, go down deep into the earth. And then I do picture that sunlight just entering through the top of my head and filling down to my toes. That's my version of a break. Your version can be a cigarette break. It can be going to, you know, have a cup of water or a soda or whatever, but just give yourself permission to take breaks. And then another thing that I found really helpful that I do struggle with is play. When you're overwhelmed, play can be one of your best resources. You can dance, you can skip cartwheel, do, if you have a pool, do a cannonball, um, you know, go climb on a big rock, but like play or even board games, you know, carve out time at the end of your day to play a board game, you know, play with the kids, play with your spouse, invite a girlfriend over, invite a boyfriend over and just have a game night. Um, we just joined a kickball team and I can tell you like the thought of adding another thing to my schedule like made smoke come out of my ears. But once we were out there, I was not focused on housework, on courses, on podcast, on work. Like I wasn't focused on anything but being in the moment and, you know, catching and kicking and running and playing. And um, I feel like it's crucial. I feel like it's something that I need. And I feel like it could be helpful for you guys also. Um, another thing is to ask for a hug. I'm big on asking for hugs um, just randomly. Like when my husband gets home from work, I always, you know, wrap my arms around him. And when he goes to let go, some days I just need a longer hug. And usually it's on days where I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling like everything is too much. That's a very uh, soothing thing. 
um, you know, if you don't have a spouse, maybe a work friend that you feel safe with, or, you know, go to a meeting, there are definitely people, somebody else probably needs a hug too. Don't be afraid um, to ask for a hug. Um, something else that I did, I, I was at the morning meditation meeting, the sunrise meditation meeting on the beach this morning. And I said to someone, I said, I wish someone would ask me how I'm really doing. And I was not expecting her to reach over and give me a huge hug and then sit in front of me and say, how are you really doing? And I didn't even know how to get the words out to start answering that. Like I got what I asked for and then I let it flow. I just unloaded because this was a person that was ready to receive. So you don't want to just dump on anyone that'll listen. But if someone, you know, shows up and is, is willing, you know, find a safe person that, you know, you think people, you don't want to burden people with your problems or you don't, you know, you don't want to trouble people, but people want to be there for you. So, you know, take a minute and think about who your people are and let them know what you need, because I needed to be asked that question and I needed to get that out. Um, if you don't have those people, then there's my next suggestion, which is talk to a therapist. I do have a therapy appointment tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, they can help you identify if you're having trouble identifying what the over what the causes are. They can help you identify those. And then they can help you identify, you know, your coping strategies. And it's nice to just talk to an objective person. It's nice to talk to an unbiased, educated, compassionate person. People get into being therapists, not because, you know, it makes them rich. It's because they want to help. And, um, you know, going to therapy, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. I recommend therapy when things are going you know, when you're having a hard time, when you're having a good time, it's just, it's good to have a sounding board. It's good to have someone that you can be completely, you know, transparent with, without fear of judgment or of it, you know, spreading to someone else. Um, therapy is good. It's good for families. It's good for individuals. It's good for couples. I highly recommend it. So, in summary, like if you identify with anything that I just said, I highly encourage you to take one or a few or all of my coping strategies and apply those to your situation because it's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to get to that point, but there's something to learn in that. There's somewhere to grow from that. So we can keep just, you know, barreling into it or we can take a breath we can take a beat and go okay like how can I be kinder to myself in this situation how can I go at this situation differently and um that's a relief and I feel joy my heart feels happy um the weight feels lifted and it's such a significant difference um, just by, you know, going through that process and, you know, being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to feel what I'm feeling and do something about it. I'm not broken. You're not broken. We don't need to be fixed. But when we're not, we're not living in the way that we want to be living when we're ready to do something different. Sometimes we need help in figuring out what to do. And um, so if you're, if you're overwhelmed, if you're stressed, I see you, I feel you. Just know that you are going to get through this and it does get better and it's okay to do less and we are never going to be perfect. And in my experience, the laundry is never going to be done. So give yourself a break. 
Give yourself permission to rest. Give yourself permission to feel. I love you guys. If you are enjoying the podcast, I invite you to follow, subscribe, like, rate, and review. Um, Leaving those rates and reviews helps us get seen in the algorithm. It helps carry the message and helps the podcast become more visible to the people that need to hear it most. If you want, if you subscribe and if you follow, then you will be informed as soon as a new episode becomes available on whatever platform you are listening from. And if you would like to contact me, if there's something that you would like to hear on the show, if there's, um, If there's a topic that you would like discussed or if there's something that you want help with, if you want to remain anonymous, if you, you know, don't mind being, you know, seen and heard either way, please feel free to reach out to me on Facebook at Brandy Kelly. There is the Sober Bartender Facebook group, and that's a Facebook group for the podcast. You can reach me on Instagram at the Sober Bartender podcast and on YouTube at the Sober Bartender. And as always, I do encourage you to share this with anyone that you think may enjoy it or benefit from the message. And I put out new episodes, new videos every Wednesday. So please follow and subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. I will talk to you guys next Wednesday. Thanks for listening.